second coming of Jesus Christ to this earth. He led his disciples out to the Mount of Olives. He lifted his hands and he blessed them. And then after the blessing, suddenly his feet leave the ground. Can you imagine how startling this was? You're standing here, he's talking to them and they've been talking to him. Now his feet leave the ground and he starts up. They're trying to figure out what is going on here. Every eye is riveted on Jesus as he ascends. Finally, he reaches the level of cloud cover and the Bible says that a cloud received him out of their sight. Two men in white apparel stood by them. This is Acts chapter 1 verse 9 through 11. And these two special messengers from God said, You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, now here's the promise, listen to it carefully. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven just now, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. It's the promise that Jesus is coming back to the earth. Jesus said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes or the nations of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming. They shall see him coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. All the prophecies point to the soon second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's not a matter of if it will happen. It is going to happen. The only question is when and will you and I be ready? Jesus said it this way in Matthew 24. He said, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, your Lord doth come. We want you to be ready, I want to be ready. Yes, I hope we are all ready, amen. How many of us love to go grocery shopping? Probably not many of us, and one of the reasons that can make it unenjoyable for us are the long lines at the checkout counter. How long will you wait in a grocery line lane before switching to another lane that you think is faster? It doesn't take me very long. I'm quick to hop. Have you ever switched to another lane only to see the person who was behind you in your old lane exit the store before you do? Yeah, that drives me crazy. <laughs> well, in a way, life is like waiting in a grocery store line. In the sense that we're waiting on the return of Jesus Christ. For him to check us out of here. Amen. Waiting on the Lord is one lane of many lanes in this world. Due to impatience or other characteristics of our flesh, we can be tempted to jump to other lanes that the world has to offer. For example, there's a lane of worldliness. There's a lane of mammon. There's a lane for rebellion. And tonight, let's take a closer look at that lane that we'll call rebellion. Rebellion is open opposition to, the, to authority. It is more than just an outward behavior, it is also a heart and attitude problem. Rebellion never pays. It will only cost us. 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. The root of witchcraft is to seek ungodly power to influence or to manipulate others. That's kind of the root of it. 
whether it's to get people to like them or to fear them. Rebelling against God can look the same if we make wrong choices that we think will make people like us or accept us. For example, there's a lane for the party animals. John Nickel, woo, he's a party animal. He's so cool. I don't say that to be facetious, but that lane has a lot of people in it. We can come be deceived or confused and believe that meek is weak and we can leave God's lane for another. In Hebrews 13, 17, the Bible says, Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give an account. Let them do so with joy and not grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Unprofitable. Rebellion never pays. It costs. It makes us unprofitable. Rebellion will cost us our health, our money, and our relationships. Not only do we lose out with our relationship with God, but it will also separate us from those who truly love us and truly desire to see us profit in this life. And this could be our own family. Rebellion is unprofitable. And here's another good scripture. During this political season, and we promote everyone to vote, to be a good steward, to be a good citizen. We encourage everyone to vote who can. But we still have this revelation that God is ultimately in control on who wins and loses. We find this stated in Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Let every soul be subject to the governed authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Rebellion brings judgment. The timing of the judgment is up to God, but you can be assured it will come. For Galatians 6 and 7 says, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, for he will also reap. So if we sow rebellion, eh, we're going to reap rebellion. Rebelling against God is not only completely turning our backs on Him, but could also be as simple as not doing something that God is asking us to do now. Has God been asking something of you that you've been pushing off? Profiting in, the, profiting in the riches of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, is available to all of us if we will not change lanes in the grocery store of the lanes of life. Stay in the lane called the way. Waiting and trusting and obeying the Lord. For that is profitable. Wait on His return is not a passive event, but it requires all of us seeking and fulfilling His will, accomplishing eternal goals. The world today is no different than the day of Noah. The world during the days of Noah had moved to a different lane. They were on a, to a lane of pride of life and self-sufficiency. And they rebelled against God's word that was presented by Noah. No different than today, people will rebel against the word, God's word, as presented here at New Life Church. But don't let that be you and me. The flood came, even as they believed it never would. Jesus is coming back, even though many don't believe he ever will. So don't grow weary or anxious waiting on the Lord's return, but let it build a hope in us that things will not be this way always. Let us stay rich in the joy of the Lord, looking for his glorious return.